it is good to be with you. And uh, let me just say, Happy Year! Happy Year! Does that sound right when you say that? No, it doesn't, does it? Why, why do you think that doesn't sound right? Because we're not looking for a happy year. We're looking for a happy new year, right? So that means we want something different than what we had before, correct? So you'd seem weird to walk around and tell people happy year. Because what you know they want and what you want is a happy new year. And this morning I want to talk to you just a little bit about how we get to something new in our walk with Christ. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you stand. I don't know where your faith is at. I don't know what you believe in and what you don't. I, I don't know how, how much you get into God's Word. I don't know how often you pray. I don't know how close your walk is to with God. But I want you to know that He's a God of second chances. And every year He gives us an opportunity to start fresh and over. And, and he gives us that opportunity to come and change things. I, I know, I know that's a bad word, isn't it? I shouldn't have said that. You have to forgive me. But if we do the same thing over and over again, you know what we get? Insanity. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. Right? I don't think that we're insane. I think sometimes we get in our minds and we begin to think about different things and we begin to say, well, I, this is the way we've always done it. Okay, but look where you're at. Is that where you want to be? So really the question this morning is, do you really want a new year? Do you really want something new with Christ? And if you don't, then you're in the wrong building this morning. I love you, but if that's not what you came looking for, you're in the wrong building this morning because God says that He makes all things new. And that includes us this morning. And so this morning, the question that you need to ask in your mind is, first of all, where do I stand with Christ? Where am I at in my relationship with Him? Am I as close as I can possibly get to Him? A am I walking a holy and righteous life before God? And if I am, great. That's wonderful. But the great thing about God is, is that there's always more. And He always has more to show us and more to reveal to us and more to give to us. And so this morning, my prayer is, is that when we leave here, we'll be looking for something new in our walk with Christ. I love to hear testimonies. Uh, I, I, I especially love testimonies from people who have more life experience than I do, that God has blessed with more years on this earth than He has me at this point. I love hearing, that, that's just a fancy way of saying old people, okay? I love hearing their testimonies, and this is why. Because they've lived here a long time. And if they've settled on Christ being the only answer, that means they've tried everything else, they've seen everything the world has to offer, and they came to Christ. For me, as somebody who doesn't have as much life experience as those people, I look at that and I say, then shouldn't I be going that way? Shouldn't I be trying to, to get what they've got? If they've tried everything else, I can take a shortcut and I can get to Jesus without having to try all that other stuff. Why wouldn't I want to learn off of their experience? And that excites me. But what I like even more than that is to hear what God's doing in people's lives today. You know why? Because that tells me God's still in the business of changing lives now. That tells me he's still working in people's lives and showing them new things and helping them to learn and to grow each and every day of their life. God wants us to grow closer to him. He wants us to grow more like him. He, likes, he wants us to be more righteous and more holy and wants us to draw closer to him in whatever way we possibly can. He wants to be more in our lives each and every day that we live. So this morning, I want to talk to you about something new. Okay, and if we are going to get something new out of our walk with Christ, there are some things that we need to do. But I want to begin reading there in Romans in chapter 12, and it's a, it's a fairly popular passage of Scripture. Uh, so it may be, maybe some of you uh, already realize what I'm going to talk about this morning. But it says there in verse 1 of chapter 12, it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, you want something new in your life? Try giving everything you got to Him. I don't know what you've given and what you've held back. We've all got those places in our life we don't want anybody to know about, and sometimes we even hold them back from God. Amen? He says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. That means every part of our life, our children, uh, our grandchildren, our finances, our work, our relationships outside of work, all of those things, the things that we think, the things that we do in our own homes, all of those things fall into that whole category. Living sacrifices, our bodies, anything that our body would be involved in should be a living sacrifice to God. That includes every part of our lives. It doesn't, it doesn't leave out the parts that we want to leave out. So then I say, if that's, if that's what we're trying to get to, if that's, if that's the goal, and we want something new from God, then what do we do? Well, the very first thing we have to do is we have to change the way that we think. That means you can't think that, oh, God doesn't really care about that, or God's not going to be here for me in that. We have to change the way that we think about how to deal with life. And this is one of the ways that Paul gives us that we change the way that we think. Let's go on and look right there. In, in verse 2 it says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So what do you do? You don't conform any longer to the patterns of this world. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and sell all your clothes and start making your own and dress like an Amish person. But is there anybody in here who does not know what an Amish person looks like? Is there anybody in here that would look at somebody and say, well, I don't know if they're Amish or not. No, you know why? Because they distinguish themselves from the rest of the world. Now, I'm not saying that they're perfect. They're humans just like us. But I'm saying they don't mind being set apart from the world and they don't care what somebody else thinks about the way that they dress in this world. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Do you understand that the closer that we get to Resurrection Day and Christ coming and splitting that eastern sky, there's going to become a bigger difference between a believer and a non-believer? Do you understand that you're going to stand out like a sore thumb if you believe in Christ? And somehow we get worried about that. What's somebody else going to think? Well, I promise you, when the trumpets sound and the, and the sky splits and God returns to this earth and Jesus comes to call His loved ones home, I'm not going to care what somebody else thinks. I'm going to care what the guy who's coming is going to say of me. That's what I'm going to be concerned about. And so, as I look at this thing, if we continue to conform to the pattern of this world... Now, let's just talk, talk about some of the patterns of this world. Is there anybody in here that think it would be uncommon in a workplace to hear gossiping and backstabbing? It, would, it wouldn't be uncommon at all, would it? It, 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 would be, it would be something that you would expect that when you go in, you're going to hear that stuff, right? Because you walk in the door and something happened over the weekend and they're going to go, did you hear about so-and-so? That's what happens, right? And, and, and when we as Christians fall into that, aren't we conforming to the pattern of this world? We are, aren't we? And, and it's important for us to remember that we have to change the way that we think. I don't, it's not that I don't care about so-and-so, but I'm not going to sit and talk about their misfortune or their bad life or the bad choices they made with you. You know why? Because you're not going to have a say-so in it in the end anyway. But if we don't, what do people say? Oh, oh they're all, they're all goody-goody, right? They're goody-two-shoes. They won't, don't, don't even bother going over and talking to them. They, got, they don't want to talk about anything but Jesus. It, it, that would be the biggest compliment in the world if somebody were to say that about me. He didn't ever want to talk about anything but Jesus. I, I, don't, I don't even want to talk to the guy. I mean, you can't, even, you, you can't even hold a conversation. You ask him about the ball game, he goes, well, praise the Lord, they didn't win. If we're going to have something new, if we're going to have something different than we've held in the last 12 months, then we have to change. 
We have to change the way we think. We have to change the way that we view things. We have to keep lo quit looking at things and saying, well, that's not that bad. I don't know if you know the difference between dark and light, but there's no gray. If we turned off all the lights and we blocked all the windows, it's all black, right? And if we turn the lights back on, it's all light, right? And so there, there's no gray area in there. And how many of you understand between righteous and holy and sinful, there's no gray area in the middle? You either have the light of Christ in your life or you've got sin in your life. But Scripture tells us that God can't coexist with sin in the same spot. Does that make sense? If we have sin in our life, you can't have God in your life. It's that, it's that simple. I, it, but Satan tricks us in our mind and uses the world around us to look at it and go, well, it's not that bad. I mean, really. I, I, I mean, if I just do this one time, is it really that bad? I don't know. Does it separate you from God and is it a sin? then yes, it is that bad to do it one time. Well, I, I just told a little white lie. Okay, so you bore false witness to your neighbor. N none of us are unaware of the Ten Commandments, right? And doesn't it say in there that you won't bear false witness? You should not. Would you say that would be a sin? Would you say that would separate you from God? Would you say it's okay then? You see what I'm saying? You have to change the way that we think. We have to change the way that we view things in this world and, and quit following the pattern that the world's setting and begin to follow the pattern that God sets in His Word. If we continue down that path, we'll not have anything new. We'll just have whatever we had before. And if we have that in our life, what we're missing is a relationship with God. Amen? Does that make sense to you guys? I, I, this is kind of a heavy sermon for a New Year's Day thing. You know, we want to come in and go, hey, God's going to make us all new. And He is. And He does it from the inside out. Amen? And it, and it starts in, in our thinking. And if we can't change the way that we think about things like that, then chances are we're not going to quit doing some of the things we're doing that lead us away from God. We need to be focused on what God wants and not what the world says is okay. There's a difference. And in the days to come, that gap isn't going to get closer. The gap is going to get different. It's going to get much wider between Christians and non-believers. It's going to be a huge gap, and you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. And if we can change our mind now to live a life that is holy, righteous, and pleasing before God, that'll help us to have new things that God has for us. Let's move on. The second thing uh, that we, do, and we need to do is we need to remember that our place is second. You're, you're not in first place. You're not driving the boat. You're not driving your car. God is. You're not making the decisions in your life. God is. If we're going to change the way that we think, about who makes the decisions in, in this world and in our lives, then we have to understand that our place is second. It's not first. It's not head of the household. It's not any of those things. It is second to Christ. Okay? So we go on and we look down here in verse 3 and it says, for by, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith that God has given you. Do not think more highly of yourselves. Now, I, I, none of you knew me back when I was in high school, but I was a stud. I, I'm not going to lie about it. I was a stud. I, I, was, I played football. I lifted weights. I sang in the, in the choir, I, I did high school musicals, and I was even, you know what a senior superlative is? You know what a senior, where they, all the seniors vote about it, what everybody's great at and all that? I was voted most talented. I know, I, I can see the jealousy, it's just terrible. It's terrible, jealousy's an ugly thing. But what I learned about in life is, none of that was because of me. Every bit of it came from God. 
Now, I enjoy it, and it was a lot of fun back then, but I wasn't all that in a bag of chips. I couldn't even get a girl from my high school to date me. I had to go out to another school to find a girl to marry me. <laughs> and I think she did just because she didn't know. And then afterwards she went, oh, man, how did I get out of this? <laughs> we cannot think more highly of ourselves than what we are. You see, sometimes Satan puts something out in, our, in our front of our path, and we say, I'm strong enough to do this. I, I can get it. I don't need it. I don't need to pray about this. I'll just make that decision on my, I'll make an executive decision. I, I was told that this morning. Somebody's wife or, or somebody's better half said that they made an executive decision to do something different. And we make executive decisions in our relationship with Jesus. And we, and we say, I'm just going to, I'll be all right. I don't need to seek his guidance. I can just do what I want to do. It'll be all right. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes God's grace covers our stupidity, amen? But sometimes it causes us to stumble and puts us in places that we should never be as a believer. And it lessens our faith in God. And it changes the way that we think and it changes what we do in situations in our life. It's important for us to understand and remember that we are second always. Always we are second the first should be God. And if we're not going to consult God, then we're going to make a mistake and move in a wrong direction. Now, you may get lucky and pick the right path once. You might. But chances are, Satan is good at what he does. And he's going to trip you up at somewhere. And he's going to find that weak spot in your life. And if you're not seeking God's wisdom and God's counsel and God's decision on what to do, you're going to step into that trap. You see, it all starts with changing the way we think. And one of the things that we think is, I'm no longer in charge of my life. God is in complete and total. Remember we said at the beginning right there, let's go back to verse 1 and look at that. It says, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to Him. To Him and and if we're making decisions on our own and we're just firing and shooting from the hip, you may hit every once in a while. But I don't know if you ever know anything about the Wild West or anything. And uh, that was one of the great things I did. I was Wild Bill Hickok in a movie, in a, in a musical in high school. <coughs> it's fast, it's gun in the way. But those guys who were really fast missed a whole bunch. I mean, they missed a whole bunch. And a lot of those guys that were really fast died because the other guys who were slower knew how to aim better and sometimes we want to live this life in such a way that we're just shooting from the hip and we're saying well i think god would want me to do this or i feel right about this how many of us understand that that nothing about our relationship with god is based on our feelings nothing about our relationship with God is based on our feelings. It is based on the fact of truth that He said He sent His Son to die for us on a cross and that, that that alone would cover our sins. And He said, if I will be faithful, if you are faithful to confess your sins, I will be faithful and just to forgive those same sins, right? So that's the fact we confess, God forgives. That's the fact that makes our relationship what it is it is not the warm fuzzies it's not the butterflies in your stomach it's none of those things that validate your relationship with christ it is simply the fact that he said if you'll confess i'll forgive and we confess and he forgives and our relationship is established as a fact you ever wake up in the morning sometimes and not feel like being a christian or have somebody say something to you that's unkind and maybe, uh, maybe not true. And all of a sudden you don't feel like being a Christian for, just give me 10 seconds, God. Just give me 10 seconds. If, I, if you could just let me speak my mind for 10 seconds, I'd feel a whole lot better. It's not based on feelings. It's based on facts. And we need to remember that God is first not second because sometimes second is 
Second is a, is a far cry from where God actually is in our life. Because you've got, well, I've got work, and I've got kids, and I've got grandkids, and I've got this, and I've got that. And God comes down here. If I can fit him in, that's great. But at the end of the day, and I'm tired, he'll get the last three minutes of the day when I fall asleep. That's what he gets. Is that God first in our lives? It's not, is it? God has to be first, not second. If we can't get that in our mind, I don't think we're going to have anything new this year. I don't think there's anything going to be changing in our lives if God doesn't come first. I mean very first. All right, let's look down here at the last thing. So how do we live this life? If we change our mind and we, and we start to, to think differently than what the world does and, and, we, and we start to think that God is first and not second, what, what, does, that, what does that mean we do? Well, the last thing is, is that you change. I know there's a word again, right? We change what we do because of what we know. Now, this is what, this is what uh, uh, Paul says. It says there in verse 4. Okay, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many from one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging... Let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Now you say, what's that got to do with any of the rest of this stuff? It has everything to do with it because we are presenting our bodies as living sacrifices to God, holy and righteous before him, right? So, Everything that we do, every talent we've been given is to be used to the glory of God. Every one of them. So if you have a talent that you're not using for the glory of God, you're wasting it. My mom used to say, use it or lose it. And I can tell you it's true because in high school I played a trumpet. I was never very good. Uh, and I, I still am wondering how I got most talented because I really stunk on the trumpet. But as we get this thing going, I could play a song, and I played in church sometimes when I was in high school. And then after my sophomore year of high school, I didn't like the band teacher that they switched to, and I said, well, I'm, a, I'm not going to do that. My mom said, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. I can't even make a sound out of a trumpet today. That is no joke. I can't make the sound of a, that a trumpet is supposed to make. I can push air through it, and it'll sound like I'm pushing air through a water hose. But I can't make the sound that it's supposed to make. And sometimes when we don't use our faith, sometimes when we don't use our talents, sometimes when we don't use our abilities that God has given us, we lose them. Right? So as Christians, if we're going to do something new, let me ask you, what talent do you have that you have not been using in the last 12 months? Think about it for a moment. You don't have to answer. What talent do you have that you haven't been using in the last 12 months? Now, you've got the talent in mind. You know what you're good at and you know what you're not. You have that talent in your mind. If you begin to use that for the glory of God, do you think it would change your life? More importantly, or not more importantly, but just as importantly, do you think it would change someone else's life? Do you think it would build our church? Do you think it would build our congregation? Do you think it would build the people inside of our congregation if you used it? What about the people in your neighborhood? What about the people that you call your neighbors around you? What about your coworkers? Would it change their lives? If you began to use the talent that God gave you? It's important that we understand part of giving our entire body as a living sacrifice to God is that every part of it goes to Him. I don't get to keep any part back. Nothing. And if I have a talent that I'm not using for God, I haven't given Him every part of me. Amen? Does that make sense to you? So, and I know everybody, everybody goes, oh, I don't have any talent. 
I don't have any talent. Yes, you do. Everybody, everybody has a talent. Everybody has a talent. Some of us are just great conversationalists. And they can, and, and people can sit and talk for hours about things. And, and some people are great listeners. And they can sit and listen for hours. Some people are great prayer warriors. And they can sit and pray for hours about things. Some of us have the ability to walk up to people on the street we've never seen before and say, hey, do you got a minute? Got something I need to talk to you about. Some people have the ability to bake really good stuff, right? And some people have the ability to write notes of encouragement to people to put inside those baked goods and drop off at somebody's house. Would that change the world? Would it change the world that we live in? It would. Some of us have, some people have an extraordinary way of just making money. You ever notice that? that everything they touch turns to gold. Are you using that to, to build the kingdom? Are you doing that to, are, are you using the talent God's given you? change the world around us you want something new this year start doing the things we talked about this morning change what you do nobody likes change but let me let me ask you this question has anybody in here made a new year's new new year's resolution this year just be honest just be honest has anybody ever made one just be honest Okay, when you made that New Year's resolution, what did you say? Next year, I'm not going to? Or next year, I'm going to start? You know what you're saying? I'm going to change. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to change. That's what you're saying. Every time that we make a New Year's resolution, that's what we're saying is we're going to change. So... All I'm saying is, don't be afraid of the word change, because we use it every day of our life. If you went to the store and gave somebody a $20 bill and they didn't give you your change back, what would you say? I want my change. You see, used in the right context, we like the word change, don't we? It's important for us to remember this morning. Nothing new comes without change. Nothing new comes without change. There has to be something different that you do in your life to affect some sort of change in your relationship with God. If not, it'll just be what you have. And if you're satisfied with that, you think God's satisfied with that, I won't bug you. But I'm going to pray for God to bug you. Because I know that there are people who have talents. Every one of us in here have talents. We need to use those things. We need to use those to build the kingdom, to help encourage one another, to give God glory for everything that He does in our life. Amen? Amen? You got the warm fuzzies from that sermon, did you? Huh? Doug, did you? He's shaking. He said yes. That got the warm fuzzies this morning. I want you to know this morning, I love you. But we got to keep growing, we got to keep moving. I don't want us to be a stagnant church that just comes and does our little thing and goes home and it doesn't affect any change in anyone's life. I want us to be a church that's vital to our community. I want us to be a church that's alive and growing spiritually and doing things to make a difference in the lives of those around us. And we always have to begin with ourselves before we can begin with somebody else. Make this a new year. Be encouraged that God is a God of change. Be encouraged that God wants to do better things for you, right? If we look back there in that passage, it says, in view of God's mercy. God's mercy is a good thing, amen? He's doing good things, and He wants to affect those changes in our lives to make us even better in this next year. You can be better. You can draw closer. You just have to make some changes, amen? Don't be afraid of those things. Don't be afraid of them. Jump in and let God move in your life this morning.